Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Charles Susu, account manager at uh, Maya Simulation, and I have Marcus Anders with me, which is the application specialist for the speed software from Siemens PLM software. And today we're going to be presenting a webinar on increase your efficiency with the speed software. So a little bit of an introduction on Maya. Uh, we're over 190 engineers and scientists, and we are in the predictive engineering and analytics digital simulation. We also do custom engineering software, or so big OEMs, and we also have another part of the company that does strictly engineering services. Um, and what we are in is in artificial intelligence, Internet of Things. We're also in digital mock-up, digital twins, so everything in CAD, CAE, CAM, PLM integration, uh, PLM, so things like Team Center and process automations, we do that. And we've been doing that for over 35 years. We're a platinum partner with Siemens PLM, and we develop over 35 products that go inside the Siemens PLM portfolio. So just a little bit on the software that we author and uh, develop. So we develop things like the thermal, flow, CFD mesh, cooling, structure, laminates, durability, FA correlation, PCB exchange, and a whole lot of other softwares inside there. And this is what brings us to the level of expertise, and this is why we've been chosen to start supporting speed as the software. Uh, so a little bit about what's happening with the software. So Siemens has been acquiring quite a lot of companies. If you realize over the last 11 years, they've acquired over $11 billion worth of companies. Uh, companies to note uh, is LMS, so that is going to have AMSIM, test and simulation. CD Adapco, which is where speed acquisition comes in, but there's also Star CCM Plus and Heeds. Uh, there's the whole Mentor Graphics lineup. And recently, Infolitica. This is where Magnets is at. And if you realize, all of these softwares are going to start in being integrated and start talking together really well, which is going to show you really good capabilities in co-simulation. And Marcus is going to be showing some of these today. And what we're trying to build is the Sim Center portfolio. And if you realize, it's in three big brackets. The first one is 1D controls and simulation. This is where speed and AM sim sit. Uh, we also have test physical simulation. So we have LMS test lab inside here. And we also have 3D simulation and CFD. So this is what Star CCM Plus, Sim Center, FEMAP, and the rest of the product line is. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to interconnect all of them. And we already have a lot of this in place. So you can actually have your test equipment directly connected to your simulation so you know exactly what's happening to make sure that your simulation is accurate because you have your test equipment and you see it's exactly correlating and you could validate your test and your simulation in one shot and this is what the sim center portfolio is and all of this is managed within the plm context so in team center and one little thing we're going to show you is with um, an acquisition of a red cedar uh, we do have HEADS, and HEADS is a nice design acceleration tool, which can tie into all of those products. So now I'm going to leave it to uh, uh, Dr. Marcus, uh, and he's going to be giving us the presentation on uh, speed. Thank you, Marcus. Yeah, thank you, Charles, and uh, hope you can hear me okay. I yep, we can hear you fine. Yeah, that's that's good. Thank you for the feedback. Yeah, so um, good morning, probably to the yes. Um, I think we have the main stuff from the yes, so I leave it up to um, good morning. I'm uh, looking already towards my end of the day because I'm uh, sitting in Germany, nearby Frankfurt. Nevertheless, um, I'm going to uh, provide you hopefully some information on uh, what is maybe new in speed. Um, also, I think we have not only speed already known 
uh, speed users, but also new users to speed. So I'm going to provide as well in kind of um, first introduction and overview into speed and then uh, show a little bit of specific features that we have been putting into the software over the last years. And uh, hopefully you as the attendees can pick some news from this um, webinar today. So I'm going to start with the release schedule because I think this is quite um, unique because we um, have been um, aligning the speed development cycle, release cycle um, to the Star System Plus um, release cycle, which is we are releasing three times a year. And uh, this is going to um, happen around March, November, and um, July. So I mixed it up. So March, July, and November. Sorry for that. And uh, the latest release is numbered here incorrectly 1402 because we also made a switch from the numbering of 1402 uh, into 2019.1. And from this year on, um, we are going to um, start with a new numbering. And uh, just to show you on this track that this is the continuous release with 1402, which is going to be renamed into 2019.1. And then we are going to have in July the 2019.2 and in November then the 2019.3 release. Why are we doing this three times a year? Because we would like to put in bug fixes as quick as possible. And also, of course, implement new features. And um, if they are small, we can have them developed from one cycle over to the next cycle. But um, for bigger projects, of course, um, this may take longer and uh, may even cover not only one or two cycles, but maybe three or four cycles. So um, this is running in the background. So as the feature is going to be ready, it's going to be tested. And then after QA have been providing his green light or its green light, then it's going to be out in the release with the next release possible. Where can you get your software? Um, you should have access to the JTAG of Siemens. And this is where you can then filter or search for the product speed. And there, <clears throat> then you can see the full list of um, product. And uh, this is just a screenshot from 1202 upwards um, now into 2019.1. As I was just mentioning, um, we switch from 1402 to 2019, and then it's going to continue with 0.1.2 and 0.3. Another important thing that I would like to show from this list is that along with the software to download, you can also download two documents. And uh, the first document is the speed installation guide where you find all the information necessary to install the speed software. And the second one is the speed on the speed release notes. And uh, what I'm going to show you in the next half an hour to 45 minutes. Um, this is a summary of um, the latest features that we have been putting into the speed software. And you can read more information in more detail on those um, features, either in the um, related manual or in the release notes. And uh, I just picked a screenshot from the latest release, release which is again uh, version 2019.1. So with that, um, to all those who haven't worked yet with Speed, um, Speed SimCenter Speed software is our leading initial design software for electric machines. It has been developed by um, Tim Miller at the University of Glasgow. He started um, around the mid of the 80s and everything of course has been at that time uh, working on the operating system MS-DOS and the programming language was um, Pascal at that time. And still the product is um, programmed or the, or the programming language is still Pascal, which is now called um, Delphi under the Windows operating system. What does Speed provide? It provides an analytic analysis of the electric machine. So it's going to use the classical electric machine equations 
And uh, this has been put into uh, a nice code, which have its own methods developed at the speed lab and um, benefit with that being quick, a very quick uh, tool. Quick means you can uh, expect results within fractions of seconds up to maybe the longest um, if it comes to uh, higher saturation levels and you need to iterate uh, within a saturation loop to, to a few seconds. Um, the speed software in general covers any kind of motors, generators and alternators, any kind. Of course, there's a limitation that we focus on specific types and I'm going to show which types can be covered or designed um, with the speed software in a minute. Um, the speed software also include inverters. So some of the programs do have um, an inverter circuit. So you really can uh, see also the switching. You can see that the current waveform does have a kind of bandwidth. It shows you switch on, switch off times. And it also includes the control of um, the inverter. So there's a little bit around the electric machine, which is necessary to drive the electric machines today. We're also supporting, or Speed is supporting uh, a link to PCFEA and to Star CCM Plus to do finite element 2D magnetostatic or, in the, or even uh, magnetotransient um, analysis. And why is this important? Well, we can see that nicely from these from this screenshot. So we have red regions here. The red is indicating a high flux density. High flux density means in this area about um, two Tesla. So we can see that three two tips are highly saturated. Um, and also uh, on the rotor side, we have um, rotor bridges highly saturated. So once it comes to locally partial high saturation levels, then the finite element solution is recommended to support the more simplified um, analytic equivalent circuit. Nevertheless, you don't have to run a full transient uh, finite element simulation. You only do kind of a quick shot with um, the finite element tool. And again, because especially PCFEA is uh, quite lean. It, it just takes another minute um, to do that and um, probably I can show you um, later on as well. So as I said, the analytic approach um, provides nearly instantaneously results. And uh, because of that, of course, it, the, the program is very attractive to be used uh, within optimization program. And as Charles mentioned already, um, we have been um, acquiring a software tool which is called HEATS. Um, from Red Zeta technology, and this is uh, also built into at least uh, user interface is built into speed so that it's uh, providing an easy access. And with that, you can uh, easily do what if studies or even run full optimization with it. Finally, um, there's an additional finite element link which is called the embedded solver. This is not this is more kind of um, automatic running a finite element solution rather than um, clicking um, menu options and then running through a finite element kind of GUI. Um, so you this eases the more the process of um, getting finite element results um, included into the um, speed analysis. So with that, um, I'm getting to the point of what kind of programs do we do or which kind of machine types we, we are going to support with the um, speed software. First is the product of or for the synchronous machines, which is called PCBDC. PCBDC does cover all kind of synchronous machines. They can be permanent magnet surface. They can be permanent magnet IPM type, as we can see in the right hand side already. Um, it can be wound field um, structures, it can be inner rotor structures, as we can see, it supports as well um, outer rotor structures. So anything that is having a single air gap with radial flux, this is going to be supported by um, PCBDC. From the numbering of the faces, you have support for single phase, 
two phase, three phase, and multiples of two phase and three phase. So that's four, six, and nine phases. The induction machine um, is also supported. And uh, here we do have single phase, two phase, three phase, um, by delta connection, of course, and um, different rotor bar geometries, similar to what we have in um, PCBDC. In PCBDC, I forgot to mention the synchronous reluctance machines. So synchronous reluctance machines are also supported um, within PCBDC. Getting back to PCIMD, PCIMD, of course, we are going to support as well outer rotor structures and inner rotor structures. Then we have the switch reluctance machine type, which is a little bit different to the synchronous reluctance machine type, and therefore um, it's sitting on its own or it's in its own um, program. And then we have two programs which are dealing with brushed type machines. The first one, PCDCM, is uh, holding only and magnet excited um, brushed type machines. And the second one, WC, has been starting to look only or apply only for the bound field commutator machines. But as this is one of the newer programs or products to say it has the more modern software structure and with that, users, customers have been asking to introduce as well the permanent magnets. We now have in WC as well permanent magnet um, excitation and um, not in in all variants that are included in DCM, but in the most uh, used one. And uh, for that reason, if if you are willing to design a brush type machine with permanent magnet, please check out first WFC. And then, if the magnet arrangement is not in WFC, then you may want to change to DCM. And finally, the last release product is about Excel flux machine. The Excel flux machine covers um, single air gap, double air gap, multiple air gaps as being a full um, Excel flux machine. Um, we have some specialities, which is the um, clopole machine type, as well as um, double air gap radial flux machines are also sitting inside um, PCAXM. So this means that you have either two outer, so sorry, one inner stator, one outer stator in, an in between a double-sided rotor or uh, vice versa, which means inner rotor, outer rotor, and in between sitting in a, a stator. So this is also covered by the Excel Flux Machine program. All of them are template-based, which means we can apply analytic equations to our templates. And of course, this is then um, leading to the basic question, can we import DXF geometries? No, we can't because we need to make use of the templates and uh, because behind the templates, we have the analytic equations um, assigned to them. So what you can do is you can um, import DXF files into the, what we call cross-section editor or outline editor and have it on top of the geometry which is represented or the template which is represented in the outline editor and then uh, the data entry so the modification of the geometry in the outline editor towards the dxf is uh, much more easier to to deal with speed is in general fully scriptable um, and can link to other electromagnetic um, finite element, finite volume programs. And uh, within Siemens, we do have star plus and magnet. Um, PCFEA uh, is, of course, uh, the product which links the most directly to speed. And uh, other products we have, we can link to is um, Flux and JMAC, and this comes uh, out of the history. Um, on the thermal side, we do have um, links with Modicad and uh, of course with Star System Plus. And I'm going to show you in more detail the link to Star System Plus. And uh, same thing applies to the link between um, speed and PCFEA and speed and Star System Plus on the electromagnetic side. So, how does the design process using speed is going to work? Well, at the beginning, you, of course, have performance requirements. Easiest one is single load point. You have a torque or a power requirement, and you have a provided speed. You have 
an inverter or you have um, the mains you have to, to so a, a voltage which is limited you may have current restrictions and with that um, you of course as you are going to work within the company with experience of electric elect machines you may even have further constraints in such that you may have to use a specific uh, lamination which is available so you are not fully free to, to design your machine you are you are limited to kind of a variety of uh, specific laminations nevertheless um, all of of these um, standard laminations should be uh, reproducible within the speed software so usually you you already have an idea um, on how uh, the top of topology of your machine should look like and with that you're going to start um, setting up the geometry in speed. I've been mentioning that the calculation in speed goes so quick and, and therefore of course speed can be used even for first analysis which which type of machine would fit the best to your requirements so you can set up a a model in for, for the synchronous machine, you can set up a model for the induction machine, for the switcher, lag fence machine, or what, whatever type you would like to, to um, compare with. And then out of um, those three models and running um, those models and, and even maybe applying already some kind of um, optimization in, into that loop, um, you're going to get a design and then finally compare the different designs uh, with uh, with each other and then find out what, what would be the best one. So having the geometry, we still need some data to feed into the software is um, of course the next thing to look at is the winding. We need to specify the load point, we need to select the material from a material database and of course the material database uh, is flexible so we are providing a few default standard materials for the lamination steel for the magnets and for the brushes and uh, it's up to the user uh, to feed the material database with his specific um, data and, and of course there's a reason for it because even if we would take the data sheet data from different vendors um, they may even differ from from the one you got because they're they're the best thing to do is to measure directly the lamination or the permanent magnets in-house to see how how the BH um, characteristic and the iron losses look like for your lamination or how the field strength and the flux strength, remnants flux density of the magnet is going to be for a typical uh, magnet. Nevertheless, of course, you can always start with the standard material to get a first glue an idea of um, on how the motor performance is going to be. So performance calculation would be the next step to look at, to initialize, and then, as I said, um, if there's high, if there are high saturation levels partially in the electric machine, we would need to do a numerical um, finite element analysis. And uh, this is especially the case as I've been showing um, for IPM type of machines or for uh, synchronous reluctance machines where we uh, expect to have automatically through the thin bridges in the rotor um, high saturation regions. So you, you can run those analytic analyze, numerical analyze, and then of course we have outputs. These are numerical or they can be graphical. And uh, with that uh, we are then going to compare with the performance requirements. If we do finite element numerical analysis, we even can um, calibrate our analytic model with the finite element uh, results, or, or if even if we have, would have measurements, then of course we can calibrate our analytic model um, similarly um, with the real measurements to enhance the model accuracy. So this is in general the workflow. And of course we can do this as a manual repetition. So if we would need to change data, which influence geometry winding, or maybe we are looking just for another uh, load point, or we would like to try out different materials, then we are going to run through that loop um, manually. But of course, 
as speed is fully scriptable, uh, we can write scripts and um, start an automation. And uh, on top of that, of course, we would run um, or link with an optimization tool such as um, Heats. So for those who haven't seen speed yet, I'm going to um, show um, speed and uh, maybe I just close it completely. Um, so usually you may would like to start from um, the so-called SPUT program. You can select, as you can see, from the six different machine programs, the program you would like to work with. And, and today I'm going to work um, mainly with um, BTC. So I'm going to start it. And the only thing that you are going to see at the very beginning is that program bar. And from the program bar, we can open up um, a new file or we can open up an existing file. So here you can see at least a first impression on what is supported within PCBDC, the different arrangements, uh, the different templates. But under this big topic item, of course, it's not only this simple IPM type, we have uh, several IPM types, I think um, about 10 to 20 with the different variants that are in this pizza, in PCBDC um, for, for the time already. Um, I'm going to make use of an existing permanent magnet surface machine, which sits on the training tab. So these are um, machines which we are using for our training. So I'm going to pick this one. It's an surface permanent magnet, which is holding eight poles, 12 slots. And um, it's easy to change just the number of um, slots and it's easy to change just the pole arc of the magnet. Similarly, we can change the thickness of the magnet. So uh, the outline editor is immediately providing you a feedback on what kind of geometry you have, how many slots you have. You can, of course, zoom in, zoom out, and we immediately get a feeling that probably this tooth width is too thick. And if you're beginning with the speed software, of course, there are many parameters that you probably don't know. The first helping hand is put on top. So TWS is the tooth width of this data in millimeters in this case, because I'm used to use the SI units uh, in Germany. So we can see, as I said, the tooth is probably far too thick. And with that, we would um, adjust it automatically uh, by ourselves. And maybe as this is now a four pole machine, we would already think of maybe the yoke thickness is already too thin and we would need to enhance this a little bit um, by making the um, yoke a little bit thicker by increasing the overall diameter of this data. So this is the first feedback that you can get from the outline from the cross-section editor. And as I was saying, here is the option of putting in a DXF on top and you can then select even the number um, which you would like to use um, to see a DXF um, cat drawing at least on top of the geometry that you would like to create. Nevertheless, uh, initially the speed software, of course, was the initial design software. And being the initial design software, um, the outcome of this initial design would have been then at the end a lamination as DXF. But um, as companies have been um, starting their design in electric machines with an inbuilt house inbuilt tool or with another tool, they would like to remodel now um, the machines in speed. And this is why we added this um, function of the DXF overlay into speed. So the next editor you may want to use is uh, the winding editor. And I'm getting back to the winding editor in a specific section. And with that, um, I'm going to leave it um, so far as, as a kind of given thing. Uh, what else do we need to do? We need to put in additional information and this is done in the template editor and um, there's a control tab for example where you specify the speed the voltage the drive and here you can select between um, square sine wave drive and uh, ac volt or rectifier so in this case it's going to act as a generator 
Um, what else do we need to do? Well, we need to, of course, provide um, material. And as I've been saying, we have a steel database manager and magnet database manager. And for the brush type machines, we do also have a brush type machine manager. And um, to select the materials, uh, we need to go to um, data materials and then select from the default or from the um, data that you are putting into um, the database and uh, for example, select a neodymium iron bore or a ferrite mag magnet um, or an M1929 gauge for the shaft bar that doesn't make sense. Uh, so make for the rotor steel and M1929. So it's just by double clicking, selecting uh, the according material. So um, as I have been playing around uh, with the design, I'm going to go back and reload the training example. Oops, no, I don't need to save, no. And EMDS, square wave, okay. So this is my eight, initial 812 um, arrangement. And I do have square wave drive, I have my voltage. About um, the tem template editor, we also provide custom editors and uh, the custom editors can be um, created um, on behalf of the user. So you can just say you would like to have something uh, specific. And uh, for example, a load point specification. And load point, as I was saying, is maybe the speed, which is RPM, which is maybe the, oops, RPM, which is maybe the um, voltage. And uh, maybe we would like to switch between the different drive options. Um, of course, we would need to have the current because um, the current is an input and the torque is an output in, in PCBDC. And um, maybe that's already all for, for the moment. Um, or maybe we would like to do a little bit of phase advance um, field weakening, uh, which is gamma for the sine wave drive and which is TH0 for the square wave drive. And then we press OK and we select this editor. And once we select this editor, we can close the big one and only have the one we are interested um, to use. And here we can, of course, change everything as we would do in the big template editor. So that's quite helpful. So um, we have to select the materials, which is OK. So simple ferrite in 1954 gauge. Um, we need to run it so we can analyze and uh, do a static design. And then we are already able to see the result. And as you notice, between clicking on analyze static design and having the option of showing the results, there was just a fraction of seconds in between. So we can look at uh, numerical results, which is um, provided in the tab design sheet. And here we have geometry, we have green and red. Red is the data that we have been putting in. Green is the data that um, Speed have been calculating. We have the material options, the winding, and uh, the torque output. So we have about um, four newton meters for this machine, 840 watts as the shaft power with an efficiency of uh, 91%. And of course, we can also have a look at uh, simulation graphs. And one of them is showing the um, current waveform on top. Then we have the back EMF waveform and we have um, the TOC waveform. And uh, as we can see, this is ideal waveform and this has to deal with the static design. So static design is going to act as a current source regardless of the voltage, even if we have specified a voltage of 280 volts or as the DC link voltage, static design don't care about the voltage. If we would like to take care about the voltage, we need to run the dynamic design. And then, oops, um, there's no nice current waveform anymore. And this is indicating that the back EMF is maybe too high for the provided voltage. So either we need to increase the DC link voltage or we need to lower the speed and as the 
current is distorted, of course, the torque waveform is distorted. So what we can do, of course, we can have a look at, at the winding. So either reducing the speed, we can uh, reduce the number of turns. So we are going to halven the number of um, turns per coil. And then we are going to do the analysis again. And uh, we are getting what we have been expecting, a square wave drive current uh, with a little bit of switching on top. So it's a hysteresis band with controller. And the control of this hysteresis band is 3 amps, should be the well around the top value. And the 8, if I make it a little bit easier for me to calculate, a 10 would mean that the bandwidth would be of 0.3 amps. So if I rerun this now with a 10, um, this should be a little bit tighter and it's about 2.7 up to 3. So that's the bandwidth which we can control by HPA. So this is the first impression of um, speed. So get, getting back to, to the um, presentation. Um, all programs. So now this was an excurs, a first intro into the speed software showing the synchronous machine, surface permanent magnet, um, quick step through the different um, things that needs to be done to get a final result. So for the old programs, we have been working in the past on the iron losses. So the first iron loss method that has been introduced into speed has been the modified Stein method. And users have been asking us to um, include also the Bertotti. And here we then added uh, the Bertotti method in frequency and in time domain. And then as we have been working on the um, iron losses, there has been a paper from the speed lab uh, where they um, presented a method which is called the CAL2, the calculation two method. Um, and this has been then also implemented uh, just for more or less comparison reason to say. So the modified style method, as you probably know, is um, uh, consisting out of uh, hysteresis losses and eddy current losses. So two um, parts, two terms for the iron loss calculation. And in speed, we are even using a, a time based uh, flux density variation in, in this uh, formulation. So what is the difference in the Bertotti method? The Bertotti method is going to add a third term, which is called the anomalies or the excess loss. And with that, it's going to have a third part in it. And uh, we, as I said earlier, have been implementing a frequency domain solution and a time domain solution for the uh, method. And you can see that by the capital F or by the capital T at the end of the name. And similarly, then finally the CAL2 method, which again only uses two terms, which one is for the history and one is for the edit current losses. And uh, having in total eight um, parameters or coefficients to fulfill. So I forgot to mention this one. In the Bertotti method, we have in total um, seven coefficients to estimate and in um, or to extract. And in the modified style methods, we only have um, four coefficients to extract from the iron loss data that um, the vendor is going to provide hopefully to us. So um, how to. Again, a quick demo on, on this one. So I'm going to um, go here again and switch. Um, well, I don't, well, let's, let's switch to sinusoidal waveform. So we are getting idly sinusoidal currents. Where can I find the losses? The losses for the um, iron loss calculation can be switched in the, uh, for the analytic uh, model from an open circuit, from a low load point a flux density waveform to an external, to a user provided fixed value, then to the three new methods which we have been introducing, Bertotti F, Bertotti, two, Bertotti T, and the CAL2 method. So here is, is your switch, here's your list of 
different methods for the iron loss calculation. And there's still always this adjustment factor for the correlates if you are comparing towards um, the real measurements. And even though you have been taking care to put in the iron loss data carefully and there's still a mismatch, you may want to use this iron loss uh, adjustment factor. And um, I've been getting feedback from the users. Some of them even uh, increase this one somewhere up to 3.5 or even five. Um, I have been designing machines before I started focusing on the software only um, with a 10 years experience about, I, I put in a value between 1.5 and, and two at that time. So how do we um, deal with the um, iron losses? Um, we need to go to the steel database manager. And um, from there, we are going to pick just an example to make it quick. Um, of course, we need to provide the BH, the magnetization curve first. So flux density values and field strength values. Please pay attention to the um, units. This is an important one. And uh, then we are going to go to the losses tab where we are able to calculate those four coefficients for the Steinmetz, seven coefficients for the Bertotti, and the eight coefficients for the Cal2. And how do we do that? Well, there's a helping hand calculate loss coefficients. You should select, this is the recommendation from my side, the middle one, loss against frequency, a set of curves at different flux entities. And you will see in a minute why, if I'm going to import the loss data, and there's an example file in the speed installation folder. And in this case, it's sitting on the 11.06, but I also, of course, could switch over to 13.06 um, or to the latest release in 2019.1. It will be sitting in the same uh, place. I'm going to, um, we can even open this one just for uh, simplicity to show what is in the file. So we do have two lines where we just provide information. The third one is very important. That's units uh, of the losses. And then we have a row with a zero in, as you can imagine, frequency. And there's the next one of frequency, uh, zero. And then there's another one of uh, frequency, zero. And the value behind this, this is the flux density. So this is the set of parameters for different flux densities and no, sorry, for the different frequencies from 50, 60, 100, 200, 400 hertz and 0.1 Tesla. The next block is same identical frequencies, but now for one Tesla. The third block is for 1.5 Tesla for, again, the identical frequencies. And of course, increasing losses as the flux density is going to increase. And similarly, increase in frequency, we can see the increase in um, losses as well. So we are going to import this data set. And if you would like to in, do the same with your material, I would recommend to exactly create such a um, ASCII file with a notepad or just copy and paste this one and modify it. And, and um, that's, that's the best way of doing it. Now we can see for the three different flux densities, as I said, red, open, one Tesla, blue, one Tesla, green, 1.5 Tesla, for the different frequencies, the different losses. And now I need just to run the iron loss coefficient extractions and then um, put the radio button maybe on max or average. So this is, as you can see, just modifying the coefficients a little bit to fine tune the approximated, based on the coefficient calculation curves with the original data set. So in this case, max would be probably the best one to select. And then uh, we press on OK. And then we have um, calculated the Steinmetz. And if we would do the same for um, the other ones, we would do the same procedure. But instead of selecting the Steinmetz model, we are going to select um, the Bertotti model or the Cal2 and run the iron loss coefficient. We get the iron loss coefficient and we would see them uh, on this tab. So once we are ready, we can just save this information, I'm not going to save this information now because I don't want to change the settings. So I'm going to close it 
uh, without changes. But you have been hopefully seeing how this is going to work. And as we have now our coefficients, our models <coughs> can make use of the coefficients. And with that, we can calculate the iron losses. There's another method um, using the finite element, which is called the element table. Why is it called the element table? Because the finite element is going to subdivide the electric machine into different nodes, triangles, um, elements. And with that, <clears throat> we are calculating the flux density in far more detail. And with that, we can just simply, um, okay. Um, no name, okay, I need to, to run or to use the right. Um, I think I have been using no name one. Um, tools, a few results. Elements table, no. Okay, then I need to rerun it. But well, you, you you can see. Sorry for that. I prepared this one, and it seems that it got lost somewhere. But at least you can get a glue of it. So you would have the triangle numbers, and for the, each triangle or node, you would have the flux densities. And based on each node of the flux densities, together with the coefficient, together with the method here. Um, it would calculate um, the iron losses from the finite element calculation. So that's about um, the finite element calculation and iron losses in general. Similarly, further features in general, which we have been implementing. So as we are delivering three times a year uh, release, um, the user can make specific settings, for example, um, where the window is going to sit. So if I'm going to close the template editor, I, if I'm going to reopen it, it sits on the same place. Similarly for the template editor, similarly for the results, if I would have some results um, and the graphical output, I do have information on where my window is going to sit. And this is uh, saved under window positions and this I can read in from a former installation so I don't have to re-specify this in the latest version. So, um, and this can be, if you miss that by opening the program by the first time, you can always go through options and uh, redo this import of previous setting. Right click on the number here on top, we're going to open up a, a list of your releases installed and then you just select the one from which you would like to copy them. And then if you would like to um, save it, please check the override existing settings and then it's done. Also, we added to all of the programs a 2D ranging. In the past, we had only a simplified ranging. So it was analysis ranging. And if two parameters have been selected for ranging, then nevertheless, this ranging algorithm took only always the first of the two parameters. Then in the next step, it took the second one of the set of, of um, parameters and so on. So in this case, we only had um, never a matrix. It was uh, instead of N times M, we always ended up, for example, by two parameters by two times M uh, variance. And uh, this has been enhanced by a real 2D ranging and uh, yeah, we are running in the um, uh, sine wave. So, but of course I need to, to um, identify first two parameters. And in this case, it has been already done. I can see that from the asterisk in front of the parameter. So I'm going to range the current in the range of one to seven amps. Now I'm going to range um, the phase advance angle in the range of um, zero to 90 degree. And uh, if I now do the analysis 2D ranging, I can specify the steps. I can specify the steps for the second parameter and they don't need to be, of course, identical. I can uh, decide whether I would like to run static design, ideal current waveform or dynamic with respect to the voltage applied. And then I can press OK and then it's going to run through and as it is using the analytic solution, it goes quite quick. And then on the design sheet, I have an option to show um, the graphs and what I would like to see, um, I can decide. And probably I would like to see um, the shaft torque 
and I can uh, put it as y1 and with that I'm going to see it um, over the current and uh, this is um, what comes out of it. So the current is going to increase and for the different um, phase advance angles I'm getting um, as the phase advance angle is going to decrease um, the higher torque. I of course also can switch on to show the torque versus uh, my phase advance angle gamma and as we would expect for a gamma of 90 uh, we don't have any torque and uh, for the zero or for the, the um, zero phase advance angle with the highest current we are going to see the highest torque because that's a surface pn we also can change to contour 2d contour we can change even to a 3D surface or um, 3D contour. And of course, you can also rotate and you can zoom in, zoom out. So all the functions are there to work with it. And uh, yeah, so that was an exercise. Uh, there's another example provided in the release notes by using a, an IPM machine and doing the uh, ranging of, of the current and the phase advance angle with um, a higher step number than I've been doing it right now. And then the, also the different plots we can see. So that was already the quick demo. Um, optimization with heats. next topic. Um, also applicable now for all the programs. So what, what is HEATS? HEATS is a multidisciplinary design space exploration and optimization software package. And uh, this is going to automate um, the search um, to help you to find or to automatically find um, the optimum that you, of course, you as the user um, are specifying. And because it searches automatically, you can run it um, overnight um, and get back the information in the morning. And uh, maybe you would like to run through thousands of iterations. Um, this is uh, something which, of course, Heats can do. Speed is linked to Heats by a Python script. And this Python script is accessible from you as the user. And you can actively modify this Python script. Um, if you would like to add additional functions which we haven't implemented yet. But usually uh, it's, uh, everything is set up automatically, so you don't need to touch um, the Python script. It's only um, having the advantage of, of doing so. Uh, tutorials provided as along and uh, about tutorial, you can find all of the documentation that comes along with the speed software in PDF format through the help format and under the tutorials you will find um, the speed reads at, at the very end. And this example presents a cogging torque optimization for surface permanent magnets. Um, again, if we can see that speed is connected uh, to reads by Python and we do have in speed uh, user interface. So that helps you to communicate to set up the Python script from the speed without any interaction in the Python script itself. So everything that you put down on this list here as the input parameters, which you would like to vary in a specific uh, range or by specific values, or if you would like to switch between uh, square wave and sine wave drive, you even can uh, and take those parameters and, and um, apply them, uh, it will then switch through the different uh, options that are available. And then the next step is going to um, provide you the um, constraints and objectives. And in this case, for example, we have been specifying that the shaft torque should be at least 50 new meters. We would like to maximize the shaft torque and we would like to maximize the efficiency. And then we are going to run it and from speed, as we can see here on top, the heat's post processor is directly accessible from the user interface as well. And if I just go one step back, also the run button sits here so you can directly start 
um, the heat optimization run from this interface. And after finishing, you will get the option to press on the heat post processing, which is then going to up, open up the heat post processor where you can then have a representation of your uh, results. And as we can see in the background here, this blue line is uh, going to show the 50 Newton meters that we have been asking for. So all the designs to the left are less than showing up less than 50 Newton meters. And all the designs to the right hand side are showing up um, uh, torque value of higher than 50 Newton meters. And on this axis, on the Y axis, we have the efficiency. And as we can see, we have several designs. And as we are going to hover over those bubbles, we even have a thumbnail. And this is uh, also one feature that we can select from here, create thumbnail so that you have the information in the post, oops, in the post processor, which design is hidden behind this specific um, bubble. From the commercial point of view, we do have two options. Uh, one option is the full heat installation. The full heat installation, of course, is interesting to companies uh, who are going to make use of the heat program with other tools. So the heat um, optimization software is not limited to speed only. It can be used uh, nearly with all packages um, which are allowing a parameter variation. And uh, so, for example, of course, with Star System Plus, similarly um, with um, uh, NX uh, and so on. And uh, specifically for companies who are just willing to make it use with speed, um, there's a, a thing we, which we call the integrated heat add-on tool, which then doesn't uh, run a full heat installation. It's, it's kind of um, hide uh, a heat DLL uh, running in the background. And of course, the post-processing is still um, accessible as it is. Um, so the difference in, in the installation is the option B is cheaper. Option A is the full ins installation, which allows you then all, also to do settings changes in the full heat user interface, uh, which, which you can't do um, uh, using the add-on tool. But the add-on, of course, is the one to look at if it's going to be limited use with speed only because then it's uh, financially very interesting. The first example on, on this is um, taken similarly to the um, tutorial, which is uh, minimize, minimize the um, um, cogging torque. And we're also not only minimizing the cogging torque, we're also looking towards uh, the magnet volume to reduce the cost for the magnets. Um, here are the constraints. So we would like to keep the shaft power around one kilowatt and uh, we have specified input voltages. We also specified flux densities, for example. So we are looking to keep the state of flux density in a certain range and also the yoke, the state of yoke and rotor yoke flux density in a specific um, range. These are the parameters which we are going to vary. And here you can see that it's not only geometry, it's also about um, current. Um, and the uh, change of number of turns per coils. And uh, this is the result. So um, the blue one is the baseline uh, cogging torque. And the red one is then the optimized one, which is about a 94% reduction. From the magnet point of view, we have a reduction of about 46%. And uh, we can see the optimized design in this screenshot. And maybe, um, I should have added something about the DMAC because now, of course, we have a kind of flat magnet and um, in the constraints, there's no, no mentioning of um, the DMAC current. So an important thing from that, looking at the results, is that in the next run, um, an enhanced run, I should add the DMAC current or something which is going to look um, after the kind of thickness of the magnet to avoid the magnet going to be demagnetized under uh, rated load conditions. 
Okay, with that, I'm going to go back to the winding editor as mentioned earlier. So um, the winding editor for PC, VTC and PC IMD is uh, identical. And uh, what did we change? We added a consequent pole um, switch, which is switching between double layer and single layer windings. So for example, a classical four, four pole, 12 slot machine, um, if you use the standard winding type concentric equal or lab, it would build up this winding pattern, um, having then two call sites in one slot. But um, if you would like to reduce the number of call sites to make uh, it a little bit cheaper in general, um, then uh, you would use a single layer, which is only holding a single call site per slot. And this is easily done now by switching to consequent pole to true. And then uh, the software is doing what you have been doing before uh, manually. We have been enhancing the uh, concentric user and concentric uh, and the lab user type up to um, different number of coils per pole, number of turns per coil. Um, and the highest number is now eight. Uh, I think it has been at the initial stage five. Um, everything again based on uh, user request. We also added a fractional slot second algorithm to identify the pattern for fractional slot winding machines. In the past, the old algorithm has been uh, aligning four coils next to each other and not uh, subdividing this pattern into a symmetrical winding pattern. And this is the case with the fractional slot two. So the two is going to remind you that it's a kind of subdivision of coils or a sim more symmetrically uh, distributed pattern, pattern than the original older fractional slot um, algorithm. In the winding editor, we also added the developed winding diagram. So this is going to show you how the coils are going to lay out for the winding for the manufacturing and we also added it um, added uh, coil distrib or conductor distribution and uh, again a quick demo on this so if we go back to here and if i'm going to open up the winding editor and just uh, make it small and go back to um, the propose which we had for saying that this is going to provide a standard lab winding distribution with one coil per pole and a throw of three. So this is now indicating a double layer. I hope you can read this gray help information. And if I would like to make it as a single layer, then I just need to set consequent pole to true and it's going to show up with the uh, single layer. If I now increase that to eight, and have a oh, better to 10 to show this one as well. So if I have a 10 and go to fractional slot, yes. And I want to make a single tooth winding alignment of four coils. And if I now switch uh, to fractional slot two, then it's going to provide this symmetrical arrangement. If I now go to the original eight, which has been this design, I get identical patterning from the two algorithms. So there's no change for this one. What I'm going to see in the all faces, I can see all the faces, how they are going to show up in, in one slot. I can see the distribution um, ending up with 108 um, conductors in one slot, a slot fill of 40% cross. Um, I can see my MMF if I'm going to move it for a single phase. It's going to say uh, run through a sinusoidal process. If I'm going to switch to the old faces, then I can see that the field is going to turn. We have the harmonics, we have the winding factors, we have the Gerges diagram, and now this new one, which is the developed one, the 12 slots for a single phase or for all the faces. And um, if I switch back to a single phase, and if I'm going to change um, the connection, for example, even the connection is going to be uh, taken into account. So parallel pass is now one, all in series. So I'm going to switch them in two. We have 
two coils in series, two coils in series, and we can connect them in parallel. And the same would apply to four, um, all individual, and I can connect them in parallel. So it's also taking the uh, uh, parallel pass into account. Distribution, so I have my 54 wires. Um, this is not showing up the right pattern for a single tooth winding left-hand side coil, right-hand side coil, because it doesn't know about the coil side model. So we need to switch to the coil side model side by side. And in this case, we have a slot liner of um, 0.4, maybe 0.3 millimeters. Um, the insulation thickness, there's a rule of thumb that it, the insulation thickness is about a tenth of the um, wire diameter. So a tenth would be something like 0.08 millimeter. Maybe the wires are not sitting directly in contact to each other. Maybe there are some kind of space air gap in between. And now we can see how these are going to fit in here. The slot fill is only 30%. Let's try a 40%. Uh, what's going to happen. The wire diameter is to be recalculated to around um, one millimeter. So maybe we need to uh, increase the insulation. But still, as everything shows up in green here and saying 54 wires, which is the number of times the coil is fitting to the left-hand side, to the right-hand side, everything fits. What about the coil separator or phase separator here in between? If we put in an 0.3 similar to the slot liner, it's still green. So if we would increase the slot fill, now boom, it's going to show you an indication that maybe now the wires don't fit into the slot. Of course, we can see still that there's space. So maybe in reality, because of, again, this is this is uh, an algorithm that is uh, kind of simplifying it, show on how the wire could lay in, in, in the slot. And we even have different pattern, pattern um, algorithms. So stacker or ortho, or starting with an odd number, similarly for stacker method or for the ortho method. And as changing the pattern, even the, the number of um, wires is going to change here. So this is something you still can decide, but at least it's going to indicate, show you on how full the slot um, is going to be. A little bit about uh, geometry and templates, um, which we added, and I'm going to uh, run through this quite quickly. Um, so we added additional different things which have been asking, uh, users have been asking to us. So um, there was a something uh, uh, missing that the whole wasn't uh, represented correctly here. Um, we have been uh, also um, putting in additional checks that the B1 magnet is going to not interfere with the other portions. So this was something from, from the support where we noticed that uh, customers have been running into problems um, with the specification. And now we are checking the geometry a little bit more careful and, and hoping that this helps to set up the right places. Then um, we have been asked very frequently on, can we have block magnets instead of a, a full magnet um, arc? And uh, so we introduced uh, this one and this can be even filled in between um, the magnet poles with um, steel. Block magnet, a full block magnet instead of a bread loft type uh, is also possible. Uh, adding a bed in between this specific IPM type is possible. Um, different outer shapes. So we have um, poly V and poly T. And the difference is that you have the straight, straight line or if you would uh, focus on the edges, the edges on top of the tooth or on top of or of the center of the slot. So these are the differences and the number of um, uh, edges is uh, identical to the number of the slots. Hollow shaft, we have been introducing then also introducing again steel portion between 
Um, the magnets can be straight line or can be round. Um, we have been increasing the number of layers for these two specific types. So it has been in the past four layers. Now it's possible to specify five layers. Um, we have been changing or allowing now this IPM type to have a, a more V-shaped type for, for the inner magnet. So this magnet can now be specified with an additional angle. Uh, which is called V-trap to um, allow um, yeah, for more variance in, in, in this direction. Um, what else? DXF overlay I've been talking about. Um, we noticed that uh, the DXF comes in a specific... Um, so we have been in the past um, providing the auto center function or manually um, set the DXF into the center of speed, but then still Maybe the slots haven't been sitting on top of each other. More likely the slot has been sitting on top of the tooth. And instead of going back to the cat drawing, you now can specify a rotation so that um, it is easier to deal with the DXF overlay. What else do we have adding, especially now for PCBDC? We have been adding a function called optimized torque speed. And for the optimized torque speed range, we uh, need to specify the starting and the finishing speed. And if this is set to zero, we are going to run from zero up to the uh, theoretical no load speed, specify the steps, specify the current, the voltage. And then if you don't change the default setting, which is zero, but under behind zero, of course, there's a, a default value, then it's going to um, run kind of automatically um, you can uh, narrow or increase uh, the tolerance. Uh, similarly, the uh, step of the phase advance angle gamma. So what does it provide? Well, it runs through uh, the torque speed. Now looking for um, the highest torque that we can get with a specific current. And for range one, of course, we are working in the um, constant torque region. In range two, we are then keeping, uh, trying to keep the uh, power constant. So in the range one, the power is of course increasing with the speed linearly until the uh, voltage uh, limitation is re reached. Then constant power based on the power we had at this point. And then at this point, we then finally notice that we can't keep constant power and then we are going to lose power again even though we are going to have um, full current again. So the third range is constant current. Um, even though at the beginning with constant torque, we also have constant current in the constant power regime, we even may drop a little bit of current. And um, there recently has been a request of allowing for a constant current through all the three ranges, which is then not providing a constant power in this range, but it's providing the maximum power uh, that the machine can get with a constant current. So this is the um, constant, um, this is the new enhanced torque speed characteristic. And uh, with that, if we are going to add an additional loop for the current, we are then going to run through those three different uh, ranges over the speed for a full set of currents. And as we are doing so, we are getting the information for different levels of shaft torque. And if we do recognize the efficiency or the losses, we can plot the according map to it. And uh, in this case, this is showing the efficiency map as we have been plotting through the speed torque um, range the, the efficiency at that specific point. And why is it called optimized um, torque? Because we are looking for the best pair of current and phase advance angle to um, get the highest um, efficiency in that load point. And again, it's a similar setup, uh, except now we, of course, need to allow for a step in the current. And in this case, it has been uh, we, we did it by, by six steps. 
And uh, to show this as well, uh, we can go back here. And uh, I think this is still sine wave drive. So we would run this uh, machine, not with the classical torque speed graph, but with the optimized torque speed graph um, from, or maybe I, I, should, I should take an IPM type. Let's take the IPM type. So um, control two is doing the static analysis and uh, we are going to have results um, similar to what we had before looking at the static. It's about 74 Newton meters, uh, control three. Um, I just want to check, yeah, we do have. Um, and control G for the graphs, sinusoidal current, back EMF waveform and the torque. And because it, because it is an IPM type of machine, um, we need to have some kind of phase advance angle to get the maximum torque out of it because we are making advantage of the reluctance torque. So, so running this one uh, with the optimized torque speed um, going up to 7,000 RPM, a step of uh, with 15 steps, the current um, is locked at 90 amps in this case peak because we are running just the torque speed and uh, no changes to the tolerance. And the tolerance of zero is indicating we are using a tolerance of 0.02 and the gamma step is uh, two degree and we are just running analytic solutions. And of course, as I said, it is recommended to use um, the finite element um, approach, but because of time issues, um, I'm just going to uh, make use of the analytics as you could see it really goes quick. And then we have the torque speed graph and we can uh, show the points of calculation. We can have the legend added, which is green torque and blue, the base advance angle. And here we have the range of constant torque. And then we are going to increase uh, the phase advance angle. And if you would like to see the power, we can see the power it goes up linearly, then it stays nearly constant. Um, through all the range. And um, what else? The current, uh, as shown before, constant current, it's going to drop down a little bit. And then if probably I have been, if I would have been calculating a little bit further on, uh, we could see that uh, the power drops down and the current stays on, on top of it. So that's the current, um, the, the enhanced uh, torque speed graph. And if I do the efficiency map, it's similarly to what we have seen with the enhanced torque speed graph, but now we're also running the current um, in steps. And if I do so, it's of course taking a little bit longer. Um, it's still analytic and with that, um, it's doable for this webinar. Uh, if I would run this with finite element in the background, um, it would need more time and uh, we unfortunately do not have this time. So it's running through and uh, we are getting the results as efficiency map graphs. And again, we have a first a line representation. And in this case, we are going to show the torque for the different currents. Uh, we also can go then to the 2D contour plot. And we are, can also have on the graph um, show the points. In this case, it's showing the um, number of efficiency. Uh, so in this area, we would have around 96% of efficiency. So this is, uh, and of course we can, as with the 2D ranging, also look, also look at the, oh, I need to take off um, on the 3D full graph and zoom in, zoom out, uh, similarly as we had before and uh, the control plot is going to work in identical way. Okay, so this was enhanced talk speed and efficiency map. Now the gophers with um, new functionalities to it. Um, we have in the IPSI polygon, which is for the square wave drive, um, allowed for ranging the current. And this is 
at the end going to allow you to check quite easily um, the saturation level. So in orange, that's the linear torque, which we would hopefully expect, but in blue is uh, what we get because of um, saturation of the magnetic circuit. So this can be now easily done um, inside um, TC BDC with using the IPSI polygon and the right ranging function of, of the current. If you would like to use external current waveforms, this is also now possible. You have to specify a specific file in a format and then read this file in. And uh, with that, you can uh, have a finite element analysis based um, on the currents that maybe you have got from measurements or from another finite element tool. Another thing that we added is the automatic node distribution. So this helps you to uh, fine tune the mesh in PCFEA uh, quite nicely. So you specify the automatic node density and value around one is recommended. Usually everything comes up very nicely by a value of one. Um, so usually there's just the need of checking the box and keeping the one which is setting as the automatic node density. And this provides a quite nice mesh. Half cycle is also have been added because of reduction in calculation of finite element. So instead of before 45 rotor steps, uh, we would do now half cycle, which means that we are going to run only, well, in this case, we are going to run still 45 steps, but now um, as this is only half cycle, we would get double accuracy over the full cycle, which is then 90 steps. Or if we check, if we would have provided 45 steps for the full cycle and we check the half cycle and would then reduce that number to 22, then we would have um, the same accuracy, um, but with half calculation time. If we are going to make use of the uh, coil side model, which I showed you in the winding editor, then we can say where in, in the case of uh, classical uh, top bottom uh, winding pattern with two coil sides in one slot, we can specify which um, coil side should be looked at for the slot pairman's coefficient calculation. Um, in the air gap region, we have been um, taking off the subdivision of in, in the post processing to show we have been uh, taking off the lines, which provides you a clear insight into the air gap. Um, the torque versus gamma results can be now also imported into PCBDC and have them shown in a graph. And additionally, we can add a line uh, for the um, uh, uh, maximum torque per amp um, values. Now, uh, final section um, linking with star system plus. Um, similarly, as we have been uh, using PCFEA, um, we can link and use star CCM plus. Um, so connecting the electromagnetic 2D finite volume solver in star CCM plus um, directly to speed, which is then creating uh, the model in star CCM plus. And uh, similarly, we are also going to make use of star CCM plus for the so-called embedded solver, which allows you to select now between PCFEA and star CCM plus. And in general, how the um, gopher process is going to work. Um, from tools, you usually start the gopher, which you would like to use. In this case, we are going to look at the BCAP distribution. And uh, from here, instead of uh, selecting um, PCFEA, we are going to select um, star CCM plus. And um, this is uh, taken, this video is taken from an older version of um, star CCM plus, which we can see by the number of nine. Uh, we still have to make some path adjustments. Now, um, everything is going to happen automatically in star CCM plus. So we are going to build the geometry. We are going to mesh automatically. And similarly, everything would be the same for PCFEA. 
now we are going to solve um, the 2D, 2D magnetostatic case and finally get the air gap flux density. And this is written to file. And of course, as usual, we are then going to look into the results of the final element by pulling out the results, which is the big gap distribution in this case, and then compare with the analytic uh, solution. And then on the left-hand side, we do have the adjustment factors to adjust the red analytic solution towards the green finite element solution. What is the benefit in uh, star in using star system plus compared to PCFEA? Well, as star system plus is providing a full um, 3D CAT um, geometry definition and modeling feature, uh, we can easily cut out or, or have cutouts in, in the geometry. And then as the model setup is already done in star system plus, uh, we just need to press run again. And um, the same workflow is going to be used to create the flux density files. Um, but now taking into account, um, in this case, the cutout, but also of course you can pull in holes or you can even modify the geometry slightly. But the results which you then transfer by file to speed is going to be based on this geometry, what you see in star system plus. And then we are going to try to align those results um, in speed with trying to adjust uh, the analytic model towards the solution which we got from final element. element. So that's that's the big plus um, in using star system plus. And this same philosophy of um, doing something in star system plus automatically initiated by speed or from speed, we can do with um, the GoTo process. In this case, it, it stands for go to thermal analyze and return. What do we return? Well, of course, for example, the winding temperature and the magnet temperatures, the mean values of those. So we have the model in, in speed. We transfer it over to um, star system plus. In this case, we do uh, extruded in the third dimension for the thermal analyze. We do have in star system plus um, kind of standard default cooling housing types, and we are going to make use of them. And with that, we may even get the iron loss distribution from a former finite element analyze in speed or in PCFEA or from the 2D star system plus electromagnetic analysis and map this loss distributed iron loss information onto first a 2D mesh in um, star system plus and then this is going to be distributed in the third dimension. So we really have the distributed losses, iron losses um, in, in this data and uh, on the rotor side. And then we are going to, um, of course, uh, apply the physics and then solve it and uh, finally get uh, the results out of it. And uh, this one is taken from a tutorial and um, the GoTar process. If you have interest in, in this, um, yeah, please get in touch with me. Um, due to time, time constraints, I'm going to skip this video, which is showing similarly as the finite element electromagnetic uh, case, um, the process from getting from speed directly to star system plus automatically set up and solving and then finally get um, the 3D temperature distribution. As Star System Plus is also going to provide a mechanical stress uh, solver, uh, we have been also creating a GOSAR, which means go to stress analyze and return. And in this case, luckily, it's not too complicated from the geometry point of view because we are looking at the centrifugal forces of the rotor only. Half pole is sufficient. And uh, with that, finally, we were getting some stress values and the peak value of this is going to be transferred back to speed. And um, it's the engineer that then needs to make the decision if this value is exceeding the uh, strength of the lamination or, or the steel uh, or not. A quick view on um, noise. Uh, of electric machine. This process is not yet um, automated. This is uh, manually done to say, so still speed is the initial design. 
uh, we are going to use the transient solver install system plus to get the transient forces on the stator tooth and the stator yoke um, of the um, yeah, stator geometry. And this is go then going to be uh, transferred into a frequency domain together with the structure or the geometry of the machine. It's going to uh, do the nodal force and structural, uh, structural analysis in SimCenter 3D. And from that, we finally derive um, the acoustic pressure with along with the modes and finally the acoustic power density which is then plotted. So this is the kind of process that we can run today already uh, in using Speed Star System Plus and uh, SimCenter 3D. Another tool where we started to link to within the Siemens uh, software portfolio is uh, Amisim. This is a system simulation tool. And uh, what do we do here is, well, uh, Amisim is holding specific um, electric machine models. And the simplest one is a linear one where we can write out the parameter from speed directly to file. And with the import app, um, if you then select the linear model, it's going to just read in um, the linear parameters, for example, the d-axis inductance, the q-axis inductance, um, the um, torque uh, constant kt, and uh, the resistance, and, and so on. If we are looking at the quasi-static and dynamic models, we do need to do a little bit more. We need to have the flux linkage data and the iron loss data, and this is then created um, similarly, as we have been seeing just with the efficiency map running through different currents, running through different phase advance angles, running through different uh, speed ranges, uh, taking into account the iron losses. The iron losses can be incorporated with finite element calculation, as well as the electromagnetic analysis can be taken into account with the finite element analysis. We can make use of the half cycle, which I just described can select the iron losses, which I also described. And with that, we are getting then finally the flux linkage data files, D and Q axis and uh, iron loss map information. And with that, these data is then imported again through the import app into an um, MSM. And with that, um, we have then describing their models in MSM with the help of um, speed. And there's a simple pull down menu here where we can as said initiate the different um, ranges for current for phase advance and for speed and we are getting out a lot of uh, different losses to calculate the efficiency so copper losses uh, mechanical losses can losses if if can is applied magnet losses and uh, uh, everything is written to file and then can be imported. And as this is a kind of longer process, um, it's also important that we may want to check those. Uh, we can uh, plot them in speed, so we do not need to have anything on our machine. So if a colleague is going to deal with the system simulation, um, and we do not, then, um, but we would like to see if, if they are okay, we can plot across all tables. We're also having a project together with um, the Amazon people on uh, thermal network analysis, and uh, we started with the HOT10 model, which is available in Speed PCBDC. And uh, they have been setting up uh, the same model in Amazon, and the information has been again provided from Speed into the Amazon model. And then we run a first, uh, first comparison. And it turned out that by transferring the parameters from speed into MSM, this is going to work. It's going to provide um, identical uh, results. And with that, of course, uh, we make made the next step in introducing this, this um, thermal network feed by the information from speed into a full drive cycle. And also the electric machine, of course, was described by a set uh, of parameters from speed or by the um, flux linkage and uh, um, loss tables. 
and then run through this uh, specific cycle and uh, got all the information that the uh, system engineer needs to have, including um, the thermal uh, representation of the motor temperature as the load is going to increase. Um, finally, a look into PCIMD, some features here. We have um, uh, providing um, uh, uh, an optimized, uh, a better behavior, I would say, a better behavior of um, adjusting the magnetizing reactants XM. Um, as we are now first allowing for the uh, calculation model of speed. Uh, and we also uh, have been uh, making it easier to compare in red the um, analytics with green, the finite element solution in um, PCIMD with a shortcut control eight. So we can update um, the vector of the adjustment vector of XXM, press control eight and everything is uh, then recalculated and um, updated uh, in one shot. Similarly to what we have had in uh, PC VDC on the different rotor shapes, we have been working on um, different um, rotor bar geometries. So we have been uh, enhancing one model and uh, taking out one kind of uh, not nice shaped um, behavior of, of a parameter set. So we changed that to get a, a better shape um, behavior for uh, rotor bar. And then for the torque speed characteristic of a Y delta or a start run capacitor single phase induction machine, we are now plotting the two torque speed graphs. And if, for example, for the run capacitor, uh, start run capacitor single phase induction machine, it's going to start with the start capacitor and a, a specific speed, it's going to switch over to the run capacitor. And now we can see that nicely that uh, where we switch from one characteristic to the other characteristic. And all, again, another add-on to the torque speed characteristic in, sorry, this is a typo, it should read PCIMD. We have been adding um, the harmonics, and in this case, uh, the space harmonics, or for a, a polyphase machine with the equivalent circuit of ARGA, um, the um, higher harmonics um, from this ARGA um, equivalent circuit. And those can be then plotted through the whole speed range. Coming to the end of my presentation with an outlook. Um, so we are always interested of what you would like to see in the speed software. So if you have a specific request, then of course, please um, let us know because uh, the software should do what, what you would like to do. And on the other end, of course, we have some ideas of what we would like to add or what we should like, what we should add. And as you have seen, um, now being with CDADAPCO first and then now under the bigger roof of Siemens, we try, of course, then to make um, or take advantage of the other packages that we have in the full Siemens uh, portfolio and to ease the data transfer between the different uh, products to gain synergy uh, with the other products. Nevertheless, there are still topics to work on directly in the speed software itself in the different uh, motor topologies. And so I've been mentioning one thing which has been asked frequently and has our material database. This is uh, on the list, uh, demagnetization go for, this is something which we would like to automate. There's a procedure, but this procedure still needs a little bit more manually. Um, it's more manually workflow and we probably uh, should have a more automated one. Another thing that we have been asked is to add um, eddy current proximity losses in windings. So this is uh, useful for um, synchronous and induction machine. And uh, then from our side, enhancing the link to AIMSIM. Um, from our side, we are looking towards a, what we call a headless speed. And then um, the enhanced torque speed, which I have been showing to you in PCBDC. We should have something similar in uh, PCIMD as well. And then there are some, some other topics uh, noted here. And then, of course, um, to communicate better with Star System Plus. 
on the four fields which I've been showing. So that's electromagnetic, cooling, stress, and uh, noise. And uh, I already mentioned that um, AMSIM and the thermal system simulation, uh, which was a quite uh, impressive um, presentation uh, at the end after we succeeded to, to import the model. And we are going to continue there. And uh, finally, at the end, um, due to the acquisition of um, Infolytica, we have another tool, which is Motorsolve. So we are, of course, also looking um, towards Motorsolve to have better working of speed and motor solve together. And uh, of course, now the question probably may arise if speed and motor solve are working nearly in the same field or are intended to, to, to serve the same field, which is the electric machine design, how we are going to position those two products. And um, from our side, um, speed, as I said at the very, very beginning, is our initial machine sizing and design tool. So this is really for the initial design because everything goes so quick, it's analytic. And you can add at the end, finally, a finite element um, as, uh, as to say on, on demand as needed. Uh, Motorsolve on the other end is directly using always um, of the finite element. And you can uh, specify um, on, on how accurate uh, the finite element mesh and the number of um, element orders is. And with that, you are getting even a higher accuracy, of course, but um, the initial design is on the left-hand side, is on speed. The more detailed analysis and with that uh, machine design and simulation is on the motor solve. And so if you would like to go for a higher um, accuracy, uh, then maybe you end up on the right hand side. If you go for the quick shot, this is uh, more on the left hand side and this is um, quite um, noted into three or four bullets on the left and left hand side and on the right hand side. So speed, very fast simulation through an analytical approach and smart finite element support if needed. Of course, we have the strong connectivity to star system dust. We have the heats built in and optimization on the right hand side, we have the higher resolution through full finite element simula simulation. Motorsolf is the more modern tool. It has a tree structure which speed doesn't have. And it also allows, because it's finite element based, the direct cat import, which is of course something which sometimes is, is of help. And it does have the strong connectivity to SimCenter Magnet, of course. Um, so that's their underlying and finite element solver. So I'm I'm through. Um, we still have 15 minutes to um, for discussions. Um, Charles, you want to pick up? Perfect. So if there's any questions that's uh, on there, if you guys could please uh, put them in the question box, and we're happy to start uh, answering them. Uh, let's take a look here. We do have one question here that states in version 13.06, the BDC can show torque and current locus in phase diagram, but in version 2019, I can't find it. Uh, this is very good to show at the operation point of any machine. Uh, can you comment for this at this time? Well, I, I need to check. So. Um... It would be nice if we could get your request by email. So you can see my email address here. Whoever have been asking that question, um, please get back to me by email. Um, I, of course, I could open up uh, now 1402, um, with, uh, sorry, 2019.1, and we could have a look, but I think that's, that's more a support case. So please um, use my email address, which is provided here, um, or go through the, um, official um, Steve portal. Perfect. Sorry for so the other thing, mm -hmm. no problem. Yes. I'll, I'll send you that as well uh, from the user that asked that question. So we'll follow up on that as well. So because while I, I wait for any, go ahead. Because I, I, I can't, sorry, I can't see the, the, the chat. So I can't see that question. So I can't see from who, whom it's coming. So that's because um, probably I'm, I'm not the organizer, so I can't see it. So please, please forward that uh, that name and the question to me, and Will do. I'm going to respond by tomorrow. 
the next question that we have okay. is from another user, and he states, uh, does PCAXM have ability to link or correct saturation form PCFEA like PCBDC does? Um, PCAXM is a, or well, the Excel flux machine in general is a 3D um, machine. And with that, we have not yet been able to um, connect it with, for example, Star System Plus, which provides a full 3D um, Emacs solver. Um, so that's something to look at. Um, again, um, if, if as I'm getting all the questions uh, by mail, um, I can see your name and company name, and, and we'll get back to you on this topic. But for the moment, no, we haven't been um, introducing any Gopher to PCAXM. And uh, of course, you can think of um, modeling a 2D radial equivalent machine in PCBDC and then make use of PCFEA 2D again, um, which is, of course, not uh, the nicest way of doing it. So the more direct way in using a full 3D um, magnetostatic solver from Star System Plus would be the solution for that topic. Perfect. So the one thing I want to just end it uh, with is if you guys like any of the tools on there, uh, especially something like the Optimate, which is the HEADS, uh, let us know. And what we could give as a promotion since you guys attended the webinar is if you guys are willing to pay for the training for that, we will be able to give you the software for six months at no charge. So that's something to kind of leverage the, the power of the tool. Uh, so for that, I don't see any more uh, questions uh, on here. What I will do is I will follow up with these questions with Marcus, and we will get back to you offline. Thank you very much for attending the webinar, and uh, have a good day. Yeah, thank you from my side as well. Uh, it was nice to see so many people on the list. And uh, well, on the list, I, I just have the number of the attendees. And uh, I hope um, I could show you at least a little bit of uh, something new for those who have been already using speed and for those who haven't been using speed everything was kind of new and um, if you have still questions um, after this webinar you can see still my email address please get in touch with me or get in touch with um, the maya people and um, yeah stay connected thank you thank you guys Take care. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye.